So when I started in university, I was struggling. It was really hard. I think I was having a nervous breakdown every few weeks because I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Classes were really hard. I had a hard time making friends at first. And there was no way for me to see how any of that could turn out to be good or why I even made it to university. I even wanted to drop out after the first semester of college and my father said, no, you can't do that. And then I did stay. And then three and a half years later, by the time I was graduating, well, I had just gotten accepted into a PhD program. I had a 3.6 GPA and I had done multiple internships, including one at the NASA Kennedy Space Center. I was in a major that I loved, I had a lot of friends, and I had some job offers lined up. So how does that happen? How does one go from like completely lost, clueless, and on the verge of dropping out to getting into a PhD program, job offers, high GPA, and basically getting the ideal college experience and a freaking NASA internship? And the more I reflect on this, the answer really is simple, and it is brain software. And what I mean by that is that during those four years in college, my skills did not really change that much. I was having the same skills pretty much, or my technical skills improved a bit. But the main change really happened in the stuff I was writing in my brain, the code I was writing in my brain, basically the frameworks and libraries that I was installing in here. And it essentially boiled down to beliefs and mindset. And you can think of a belief as a piece of code that you write in your brain and then you accept as an absolute truth and you use that as your North Star when you're making decisions or you're setting goals or when you're talking to people. So in this video, I wanna tell you about six frameworks that I adopted, essentially six pieces of code that I wrote into my brain and I wrote them over and over until they became hardwired. And I used them as mental models, as my North Stars when I made all my decisions. And some of them are in the form of statements, others are in the form of questions. And the first one is that I started asking myself, what can I do that no one else is doing? And that's because I made the first observation that my first semester, I was spending all my time studying and everybody around me was spending all their time studying. I mean, there were people spending all their time partying, but we're not gonna address that. But suppose the people that were taking classes seriously, they were all studying, I was studying. Well, guess what? We all had like decent grades, but like we all ended up with the same results. And so we had no internships, no real world experience, no like further idea of what we want to do. We were kind of in the same boat. So then I started asking myself, hold on a second, if I'm gonna keep doing what everybody else is doing, I'm gonna end up with everybody else's results. So then I changed my approach. I noticed that everybody just goes to class, does the homework assignments, hangs out with a friend and that's it. And then they take the exams and that's it, they move on to the next semester. And I start realizing, okay, if I keep doing that, I'm gonna get everybody else's results. If I wanna get unique results, I have to take some unique action. And that's when I started to join clubs, join activities, join extracurriculars, start building stuff outside of class. And that's where a lot of the real results I got I joined a research program and I started emailing professors. I emailed, I think maybe 45 professors in the engineering department and I got four replies back and one of them, two of them decided to interview me and one of them took me for an apprenticeship. And it was in the neurology department and I was working on brains with MRIs and magnetic fields and I learned a ton from there, way more than I could have learned from class. And that was from the simple belief that I adopted that, okay, if I want to do something that no one else is doing, I have to think in a way that no one else is thinking. Now, another piece of brain software or mental model or heuristic that has served me or belief that served me or I was always tell myself, if somebody has done this before, I can do it too. And that's when people would tell me, oh, don't take this class, it's very hard. I would say, well, how many people have taken it before? And the answer would be hundreds of thousands of people. And I would ask how many of them had A's? And they would say, okay, maybe like 15% of those people. And I would think, okay, if 15% of a thousand people got A's, that's 150 people. That means I could probably do it too if I really wanted to. If one person is doing something, there's no reason I cannot do it myself. And I adopted that belief with everything that I do. Whenever I would do something and everybody would tell me, oh, no, no, this is very hard. I would always ask, has this not been done before? And there's actually a story about this where for a very long time, nobody could run a mile under four minutes and everybody thought it was impossible. And then in one year, some guy trained very hard and he ran a mile under four minutes. And guess what? The next year, like, 20 people ran the mile under four minutes. And that's because that guy broke the belief such that everybody else looked at him and said, well, if that guy can do it, I can do it too. And they adopted that and it made them achieve the goal. So whenever you're faced by something that's like hard, always ask yourself, has this been done before? And if the answer is yes, and especially if the answer is yes by many people, well, you can do it too. Third mental model that helped me really, really serve me, this one's probably the greatest one, is by asking myself, if I assume that I'm going to be extremely unlucky, how am I going to win? And what I mean by that is very often in life like luck and chance could help somebody succeed and the other side of that is that like the lack of luck or the lack of chance can push someone to struggle for much longer and I remember in college I would ask myself I would say okay if I were to have the worst luck possible what do I need to do to ensure that I still succeed and the answer for that was just volume more hours studying more hours working more applications more people to talk to more events to show up and I just had the assumption that okay there's a very good chance I'm just gonna be unlucky and things may not work out and I didn't take that as a belief like I wasn't like oh I'm gonna be unlucky but I was just kind of like hedging my bet where I was just kind of like it was just just in case in case things don't 
don't work out for me, I still want it to be my responsibility. I don't want to blame external circumstances. And that's why I would apply to a crazy amount of internships. I would talk to a crazy amount of people. I would do everything like 10 times more than everyone else. And that was the only way I could truly ensure that even if I get super unlucky, I am still increasing the odds of getting what I want or winning or getting the internship I want, getting the job I want. And this is actually currently my strategy on YouTube because I started this channel more than a year ago. And compared to like other channels, it's probably growing like much slower. But I am again telling myself, okay, assuming I'm extremely unlucky. And even if my videos are good, and the YouTube gods or the algorithm or whatever is still not promoting my videos, what can I do to ensure that I'm still reaching a large number of people so they can benefit from my advice. And the answer is that to that is don't blame YouTube, don't blame the algorithm and just make the best video possible, give the most value you can possible to people, help people as much as you can and just keep going and don't stop. And that's exactly the actions I'm taking. So you know, I did apply this in university, I apply this in other areas of my life and currently on like this YouTube channel as well. Which by the way, if you're watching this, this is awesome. Like I'm really glad one, you made it so far that this video, which means you're gaining value. But two, that you stumbled upon this video, which I hope that it's actually helping. Which brings me to the mental model number four that has served me very well. And I started adopting the belief that people want to help me. So I started telling myself, people want to help me. How can I help them help me? And what that means is when university, I started looking for people to help me. I realized, okay, I cannot do this on my own. I need people who see my desire to succeed, my potential and my like ability to learn things quickly. And I'm just my, my hunger for like learning, you know? And I started believing deep in my heart that there are people who will, when they will notice that they will want to help me and they will push me forward. And that's, I, I carried that attitude and belief with me when I would go to events, when I would go to like research offices, when I would go meet other, other students or when I talked to professors and surely after after I started meeting people who would start introducing me to opportunities or start introducing me to people. And these people wanted to help me. And this is a very important one because very often, especially in the modern rapid world, that's like, like where everybody seems to kind of self-absorbed and self-serving, it's very easy for us to get jaded and say, oh, everybody just cares about themselves. But I would urge you to adopt a different belief and say, no, people want to help me and people probably will help me if they see that I'm willing to put in the work. How can I find those people that are willing to help me? And how can I help them and give them something in return such that we both benefit? And if I still cannot find that help, well, then I still got to do something about it. Which brings me to mental model number five, and that is learn how to stare and to the abyss. In other words, don't avoid the main thing. Don't avoid the hard thing. And I kind of overdid that a little bit where in college, I would wake up every single day. And the first question I ask myself every single day is, what am I going to do? What am I going to do for my major? What am I going to do for my career? What am I going to do with my life? And even though these type of questions put a lot of pressure, and sometimes it would be unnecessary pressure, like especially if you're thinking way too long term, I would actually also argue that this amount of pressure or these type of questions that I would ask myself every day, which is like, what am I going to do? What's my plan? What's my plan? Me asking that to myself, would force me to be like, well, I got to figure it out and go talk to people or go attend the right classes, talk to the professors and just take action, you know? And this is like where things get a little gray because some people are like, no, just like trust that it will happen. And I do believe that it's like, I am a bit more on the spiritual side where I do think that like having faith and belief that things will work out does tend to help things work out. But I also am a realist in that you need to take action or you need to increase the odds of things working out. And the only way for that to happen is you have to stare into the abyss. You have to look at your problems. You have to look at why you're not getting the results you want. And you have to tackle that head on first thing every single day until it's no longer a problem. Because if you just bury that in the back of your mind, like time goes by and you don't really improve. So don't fear the abyss, stare into the abyss and see what you can do with it. And the sixth and final mental model, and this really falls more as a principle, is that if it cannot be disproved by physics, it is possible. And this is something I actually learned from my PhD advisor. And this really becomes relevant to technical problem solving. Whenever you're trying to solve a problem, you have to always ask yourself, is there a certain physics law or principle that's preventing this from being possible? And if the answer is no, that means it is possible. You just have to find a more creative way to do it. Now, while this applies to technical problem solving, it still applies to everyday life and decision making. And this actually falls part of a four story mental model that I have developed where I think is what separates like really exceptional engineers from good engineers. And I made this video called Decoding the Mind of a Top Skilled Engineer to go, to just understand what goes on inside the mind of the best engineers, like the best of the best. So you should click on it and watch it. 